Hey gang, welcome back. Today we're talking about stress transformation. We're continuing our discussion that we've been talking about in this series, but today we're going to do it a different way. You know those equations we used the last a couple of videos? Forget about them. I can't remember them. It is a Google world. You could go look them up. If you're an equation guy, you could go look them up. But today I'm going to show you a different method called more circle that will teach you how to find the exact same things that you got from the equation method in stress transformation, but doing it a much simpler way, a way that even, even I can remember <laughs> using something as simple as a circle. Hey, we know about circles. We can find midpoints of circles. We can find the radius of a circle. If you can do that, you can do this method. So let me show you how to do it. Okay. So we start off with a stress element. We're used to this stress element, right? This is a little infinitesimal piece of material. And what, what the stress element is tells us the stresses that are acting on that little small uh, piece of material in space there. So we see in the y direction, we have a force like so. That is compression, right? This one, there's a stress in this direction. Stress, remember, that's like intensity of the force of 45 megapascals. So intention and compression. And then on the faces, we have shear stress. Now the shear stress will always come to the same corner here, to the same point, because if this one doesn't cancel out that one, then your stress element's rotating. And if your little piece of material is rotating, that I means it's torn loose and it's spinning. It's a bad plan. So what do we do with this? Okay, the way I like to think about this is all the information you need to plot your circle over here that we're going to talk about is contained right there. Okay. Now look at all the things they're asking us to find. Average normal stress, the principal stresses, tau max, the angle theta that it takes to reach the principal stresses. And then finally, find sigma x, sigma y, sigma x, sigma y, if the element is rotated 23 degrees clockwise. So we want to do a stress transformation of 23 degrees. Can we do it? I'm going to show you how to do it. It's super easy. It goes like this. Okay. First step, go over here. We want to get, we want to get two coordinates to plot a circle. We need two points. We need two points on the circumference. Okay. That's going to give us a diameter. Those two points are going to give us a diameter and they're going to come from here. And here's the, here's how way I think of it. You get one point from the X face and you get one point from the Y face. Okay. There's your two points. Okay, an X coordinate, Y coordinate, X coordinate, Y coordinate. Now in this case, in more circle world, we don't have an X and a Y. What we have is an axis that's instead of X, it's a sigma axis or normal stress. And we have an axis that's the tau axis, which is shear stress. Now, this is a big hang up, okay? Look where the positive tau is. It's on the negative, it's going down. This is not an XY coordinate system, even though it is 90 degrees to each other. This is an XY. This is Sigma tau. Okay. So this is different than XY world that we live in over here. Okay. So once, once you come into more circles world, right, you're in a, a Sigma and tau orientation here. And the way to remember that is this is positive, just like it was in X, but in tau positive is going down. That's the only difference. Okay. So, if I have a coordinate with taus and sigmas, I should be able to plot, right? Here's my sigma coordinates and there's my tau coordinates. Okay. So let's go on X face and let's get the coordinates off of the X face. Okay. So the sigma and the X is 45 and that's in tension. What does tension start with? Do you remember? Tension. Guess what? Tension starts with a positive sign, right? So this is positive 45. What about on the Y face for the Sigma value? Well, that's in compression. Compression is negative. So negative 60. Okay. And now the tau faces. Okay. This is where the, it's not really that confusing, but I'm going to give you two ways to get this straight. Number one, all you got to do is look at the, 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 uh, shear stress on the face you're interested. I'm, I'm talking about the X face. Let's see on the X face, the shear stress is going up. Is that about here, right? Is that going to rotate me clockwise or counterclockwise? Let's see. Whoop, whoop. That's counterclockwise. And counterclockwise, we know for moments, right, is what? Positive, right? 30. Okay. Look at the Y face. Which way does it rotate me? Oh, that's clockwise. That's negative. So counterclockwise positive, clockwise negative. Okay. 
That's one way. Just look at the face, look at the shear. Does it rotate you clockwise or counterclockwise? How else can I remember that? Relating these points to over here, right? I've got above the axis and I've got below the axis. Now below the axis is going to be positive. Above the axis is going to be negatives, right? But look at this. In the kitchen, we remember this right from way back. In the kitchen, the clock is above and the counter is below, right? So if this guy rotates me counter, whoop, I know that he is going to be below. The counter is below, right? So I know that point is going to be below the axis. Well, he was positive, so yeah, positive's downhill. But if I can't remember that positive's downhill, I can also use the kitchen. Clock is above uh, and counter is below, right? So depending on which way these moments, these, these towels rotate me, tells me if I'm going to plot above the axis. And that's the number one mistake I see students making, is plotting the diameter and plot it here instead of here, right? You'll get the same center. You'll get the same radius. You'll get the same numbers. Everything will be the same, except when it comes to rotating it. Then, instead of rotating it this way to get to the principal stresses, right, they'll rotate it that way, right? So they'll be backwards on the angle. That's the only thing that'll mess you up. Okay, so, but if you remember that positive is down and just use your regular moment, which way does it make me spin to get the signs, you'll be good. So once I come up with these, the coordinate points, do you see how to get those? Those are, that's pretty straightforward, right? Once you got that, man, we're almost there, okay? Let's, let's plot them, okay? So let's see, 45 and 30, okay? One, two, three, 45, no, one, two, three, four, five. There's 45 right there. Okay. And then what? Positive 30. Positive 30 is down. One, two, three. There's positive 30 right there. That's right. right. One, two. Yeah. Okay. So there's one point. And I'm just going to write over here that this is the X face. Okay. Just so I can remember, and that coordinate is what? 45 comma 30, okay? Just so I can remember which face is associated with that point. Because when I go to rotate, I'm gonna say, oh, the X face is gonna to have to rotate uh, counterclockwise to get to this axis, right? Or clockwise to get to that axis, okay? So that's important. The next phase, negative 60. One, two, three, four. Five, six. I'm using two tick marks here for for tens. And then what? Negative 30. One, two, three, negative 30 right there. All right. And so that is the Y face. Okay. And that guy was uh, negative 60, 30. Okay. So the next step is to take, and, you, and it would be really handy if you're going to do more circle, if you had like a compass or a a circle drawing tool or something, right? Because uh, nice, nice circles make your life easier other than, you know, free-handed eggs. Okay, that's usually what I draw. If I freehand them, I'll make an egg. Okay, so there's my diameter. Now, the, the first thing that you need to find on this, well, you can construct your, I can construct the circle now. Okay, and here's how I'm going to construct the circle. I've got a piece of string. You don't have a, this is a fancy compass here for a, uh, for my marquee marker. Okay, so here I go, drawing my circle with my Im improvised compass. Oh, okay. Okay, that's, that's not too bad for an improvised, uh oh, an improvised compass. All right, so there's my circle, okay? There's my coordinate points. I've got everything done. So the first thing you got to do on the compass is, I mean, the compass, the circle, the circle is find out where is the center, okay? Well, the center, right, the center would be halfway between those two points there, wouldn't it? Okay? And so if this is negative 60, that's positive 45, add those together, that's a distance of 105 divided by two, because that's where the center is, that's 52.5. So I can come 52.5 from this side, right? 
52.5 or I can go 52.5 from that side I'll arrive at the same point right so 52.5 off of 45 uh, takes me to what negative 7.5 and then 52.5 on to negative 60 takes me to negative 7.5 and look we're oh man negative 7.5 okay that's where the center of my circle is okay so the distance here right here is 52.5 the distance over here is 52.5 now in the book they've got a fancy equation for that do you need an equation for that really I mean, it's just fun in the middle of the circle, right? So it's halfway between the two endpoints. That's, that's all there is to that, okay? So, guess what? And we just found something. That guy right there is sigma average. It's the average between the biggest negative and the biggest positive is, boom, negative 7.5. So we just found answer A, okay? So answer A, sigma average is equal to 7.5 negative megapascals, okay? Boom. That's A. Next thing, can we do this? Can we find, can we find the radius of the circle? Can we find the radius? Well, heck yeah. Okay, what's this height over here? This is 30, okay? That's 52.5, so I'm asking you what's the radius? That's easy stuff, isn't it? The radius is equal to 30 squared plus 52.5 squared square root, right? That looks like Pythagorean theorem because that's exactly what it is. Okay, here we go. 30 squared plus 52.5 squared equals square root of the answer 60.47. So R equals 60.47. Okay. So 60.47. 60.47. Guess what we just found? Okay. We just found the principal strip. I mean the 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 norm the we just found the maximum shear stress. Because if I take this guy and I rotate it, whoop. To this point, to this point right there, and this point right there, it's the bottom and the top of the circle, isn't it? That's where tau is the very max. So what is that value of tau? Well, since, this, since the center of the circle is on the sigma axis, it's just a radius away, isn't it? Okay? Now that's an important point. If you construct these circles, they always, 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 always are going to be centered on the sigma axis. Why? Because tau is always once positive, once negative. If that one's negative, then that one's positive. If that one's positive, that one's negative. Always. So tau max, which is what? That's answer C, isn't it? Answer C, we just got that. Tau max is the radius. It's 60. 0.47 megapascals. That's that one. Let's see. The principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, where are they? The principal stresses are like the maximum stresses. What's the maximum normal stress? Well, the biggest normal stress looks like to me right over there. That's sigma 1. Right over here, that's sigma 2, right? Remember that big giant equation, the equation method to find these? Watch how easy this is. From the center point of negative 7.5, how far do I have to go to get over to there? A radius. So it's the radius plus the center point. So that plus negative 7.5. So sigma 1, right? This is answer B. Sigma 1 is clear. 60.47 minus 7.5. 52.97. What I say? 52.97 megapascals. And what's sigma 2? Negative 7.5 plus another, what? 60.47 
So 60.47 plus 7.5 equals negative 67.97. Now, you're going to remember that giant stress transformation equation for your principal stresses, or are you just going to whip out a circle and get after it? That's so easy, isn't it? Okay, let's try something else. Okay, um, angle theta to reach the principal stresses. Now, this is a l it's, it's not tricky, but it's a little confusing, so stay with me here. Okay, so the x face to reach principal stresses, I've got to go like this. Whoop! Because there's principal stresses right there, right? So I've got to rotate. Which way is that? That's, uh, I don't know. That's counterclockwise, isn't it? So basically, I'm asking you, what is that angle? We'll call that angle phi, okay? What is that angle right there? Well, gosh, we could use tangent, couldn't we? Tan phi equals opposite, what, what? 30 over adjacent, 52.5. Uh, 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 Our calculator. 30 divided by 52.5 equals, inverse tan, answer equals 29.74 degrees. 29.74 degrees, okay? Now, here's the dealio. This, this is angle phi. Now, I did this on purpose. I use the angle phi when I'm inside of more circle. But when I go to the real world, right, which is over there, Right? Because what I'm asking you is how much do I have to rotate that stress element to get to the principal stresses, right? Real world degrees are different than more circle degrees, okay? In that you have to divide them by two to get out here. And if I have degrees out here, like on the next question, they asked me 23 degrees, in more circle world, I'm going to have to multiply by two. So multiply by two to get in, divide by two to get out, okay? So once I find an angle over here, then the angle that I'm going to add, that they asked me for, right? What's the angle to find the principal stresses? That's angle. That's part D, okay? And D theta is equal to twenty-nine point seven four divided by two, right? So divided by two, fourteen point eight seven. Fourteen point eight seven degrees, okay? So what that says is that, you know, if I have to go from principal stresses to maximum shear stresses, okay, now at max shear stress, let's, let's just think conceptually here for a second. When I'm at maximum shear stress, what is, when I'm at, when this guy here goes to the very biggest it can possibly be, what are these two values here? Well, look, when, I, when I'm here, sigma x is just here for both faces, right? So when I'm at max here, I'm at average stresses here. When this guy goes to zero, right, what am I? When tau gets to zero, what? that's when I'm here because tau now is zero, right? There's no up and down, right? Tau is zero. So when tau is zero, I am at the principal stresses, right? I'm there. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, here's the other thing. When I start rotating that, you know how cosine and sine works, right? When I get to 45 degrees, my angles start coming back down again, okay? So when I, in the real world, if you just take this stress element and you're at, let's say this was at zero, once you rotate to 45 degrees, you're at max. Now look, in more circle world, we gotta multiply by two, we got to rotate 90 degrees to get to max, right? But over here, only 45 degrees to get to max. So if shear stress is zero, if I rotate that guy 45 degrees, I'll be at the principal stresses every time, okay? It's a little, those, you may have to go back and watch that again. Wait, what did he say? Because that's a conceptual question you'll get on the test, you know, so we'll be watching out for that. Okay, so now part E, is there part E? Part E, okay? Party, man! Yeah! Okay, that's a different kind of party. <laughs> Find sigma x, sigma y, and tau xy, right? And, and let's just draw it on a new stress element, okay? So here's our new stress element. There's a sigma x, sigma y, and here's the tau xy. Okay? 
Let's see if we can find them, okay? So we're going to rotate 23 degrees CW. That means clockwise. So 23 degrees clockwise, okay? Now this angle we just found was what? 29.47, okay? Okay, so we were at 29.47 degrees here. So if we added that clockwise, clockwise, this way, clockwise, right? I'm going to add to that 46 more degrees. Okay, where's my calculator? Okay, so 29.47 plus 46 more degrees equals 75.47. Okay, let's see, that's 90 degrees, so 75 is, let's say, let's say right there, okay? I'm just, I'm estimating, okay? But that's pretty close, okay? So there's a new point, there's a new point. So my X face used to be over there, so my X face is now over here. My Y face rotated also clockwise, and now he's over there. Now, why is that important? Because when I, when I read the values off of that point, I'm going to put them on the Y face, right? When I read the values off of that point, I'm going to put them on the X face, okay? So here we go. Here's all we need. We need to know what is this, right? What is that value, right? Which is the same as this value. And then what is um, this sigma value right there, right? That's all we need to know, okay? And that will tell us what to put on there. So let's just see if we can calculate that right quick, okay? So what is this distance right there? And what is this distance right there? Question mark, question mark, right? Because this value right here is going to be my new shear stress tau. This value right here added on to the center of the circle, right? That's an important part. This value right here plus the center of the circle is going to be my new sigma value for that face, okay? Easy as pie, right guys? Okay, so what is this little angle right there? That little angle right there is, what did we say? I already forgot. 75.47 minus 90 is 14.53 uh, degrees. So this is 14 0.53 degrees, okay? So I just made myself a little triangle. You know what? The radius hasn't changed. It's still 60.47. So this side over here seems like it's opposite, so that would be sine, right? Sine of 14.53 equals opposite, whoop, 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 x divided by the hypotenuse, 60.47. So x is equal to, how much is that? Um, sine of 14.53 times 60.47 equals 15.17. And then the y value, right? This is y, that's x, okay? That's gonna be cosine, isn't it? Cosine 14.53 equals adjacent y, my ruler fell over, divided by the hypotenuse, 60 point, whoa, 60.47, okay? So let's see what that is. Cosine of 14.53 times, whoops, parentheses, times 60.47 equals 58.54, 58.54, okay? So here we go, my new, my new guy. Okay, the Y face is going to be this distance here. It's going to be this number right here for tau. Is that positive or negative? Positive is down. That guy's negative. So what does that mean? Negative means what? It means he's rotating clockwise, doesn't he? On the Y face, he's got to rotate clockwise. Okay, that means on the other face, it would rotate this way, um, this way, this way. They're always tip to tip and tail to tail, right? So tau, X, Y... This is for the 23 degrees, okay, would be equal to 58.54 megapascals, okay? That's that guy. What is the sigma value, okay? The sigma value, if that distance right there is 15.17, for the Y face, it's negative, negative what? 7.5 plus that distance there, right? Because it's this distance plus that distance, right, from the origin, 15.17. Uh, 
So negative 22.67, which means negative means what? Compression. It's in compression, right? Compression. What did I say? 22.67, 22.67 megapascals. Okay. On the X face, what's the X face going to be? It's going to be negative 7.5 plus 15.17. So 15.17 minus 7.5 equals 7.67, but it's positive, which means he's in tension. Don't, 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 don't. 7.67 megapascals. Okay. There's our new stress element when you rotate 23 degrees, which is really 46 degrees inside a Moore circle. That is all the tips and tricks you need to, to do Moore circle, okay? Now, to me, this is way easier. Once you construct a circle, I can get radius, I can get all this stuff off of this so fast, and it's a heck of a lot easier to me than remembering those equations, right? If I don't have those equations available to me, more circle every time. So this is how I'm going to solve all those problems is I'm going to whip out a more circle and do all those stress transformations. I am not going to use the equation method. But I find some, you know, Johnny Weeksaw students is like, I don't like that. I like to just plug it into the, yeah, you, you just like to plug it in. Now, if you're really super smart, if you're super smart, you work this out in more circle world, and then you go check it with those equations. You should get the exact same answers. If you don't, one of them is not correct. The problem with the equations is, if you don't plug something in as a negative, you know, like your shear stress, right? If you don't plug it in as, if it's a negative shear stress, if you don't plug it in as negative, wrong answer. If you don't plug in angles, rotating clockwise as negative, counterclockwise as positive, wrong answer, right? This will keep you from getting those wrong answers. I hope this helps. I hope this makes more circles super easy for you, and I'll see you on the next video.